Well, to come on, be seated. We'll get started. We're running just a minute too late. Okay, we're gonna do it. You gonna do a little, little bit different today. Uh, we're gonna run, run through something that'll, that'll have some additional material to it than our lesson. And next week we'll go over the lesson. Uh, so you get a, some added stuff that wouldn't, that wouldn't be. He couldn't put all this stuff in, in one lesson. So uh, I'm gonna cover it through the Bible, and then, then next week we'll, we'll work on the lesson. Okay? Everybody, turn, turn in your Bibles to Daniel chapter two. <clears throat> Good place to start in talking about the church of the kingdom <coughs> and Christ. Has anyone got any announcements before we get started? Anybody okay. got anything they, they need to announce today? I know there's a lot that needs to be announced. But... Mark gave you some stuff, didn't he? Okay, Mark, talk did, about. did anybody have anything? That's... Anybody else got anything? Let's not be. Okay, Daniel, Daniel chapter 2. We're going to start, start off and looking, looking at Nebuchadnezzar's dream here. We, uh, I'm going to read, read, read his dream right quick. Uh, where Daniel, Daniel was relating it to him. You know, remember uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, uh, called in all his wise men, soothsayers and all that, and uh, except Daniel and him, and he said, uh, I had this dream. My dreams left me. I don't remember what it was. You tell me what it was, and then you you interpret it for me. And they said, oh, can't, we can't do this. You know, you're going to have to tell us what the dream is first, and then we'll interpret it. And he said, no, I don't remember the dream, but even if I did and told you what the dream was, you'd, you'd stall and take time, and you'd, and you'd figure up something to tell me instead of telling me the truth. <clears throat> so he decided he's going to kill them all. Well, Daniel heard about this, and he went to, to the... The guy over them said, uh, talk to the king and asked him, tell him, Phil, give us time. We'll, we'll take care of that for him. Uh, putting in my own words, of course. <clears throat> and so he did. And uh, Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach, the bed and the go, prayed that night. And, and the vision was revealed under Daniel. And, and uh, in chapter, again, chapter 2, verse 30, 31, says, O king, Saw us and behold a great image. Thou king saw us and behold a great image. This great image was, whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs and iron, legs of iron and his feet part of iron and part of clay. Then keep this in mind right here. Thou sawest that it a stone cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now what was the little stone? Now we didn't, that's not mentioned in our class, like I said. I'm going to give you some stuff that's not mentioned in, in, our, in our lesson, and he couldn't put all this stuff in, in the lesson, and I hope, hopefully I can get through this part, and then next, next week we'll, we'll do the lesson, and then we'll have it all together. <clears throat> well, that little stone was the church. It was cut out, out of the mountain without hands, and it smote the image upon his feet, which was made of iron and part clay, and down went the image. <clears throat> and... Uh, and then translating this too, uh, explaining what it means to Nebuchadnezzar, said uh, in verse 38, last verse, I said, Thou art the head of gold, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and uh, third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of part of clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with mire of clay. 
And as he toes of his feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou saw the iron mixed with mire of clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And then the next verse, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. If you remember, each one of these kingdoms starting off with the, with the, <coughs> the first one, uh, which was Babylonian, each one of them succeeded each other. In other words, one took over the other. But God said, this kingdom shall not be left to other people. Nobody's going to overtake this kingdom. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now, what's he saying? The church is going to destroy all these kingdoms. If we have a problem with that, we will look at verse, look in chapter 7 just a little bit where God said it again. <clears throat> but here he mentions in verse 45, For as much as thou saw it, that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. So uh, let's, let's look at chapter, chapter 7 now. <coughs> right. Well, it didn't, didn't destroy them, but it helped. We'll see that, like I said, just a minute. Well, let me read this for you. Uh, let's see which verse is it now. Daniel. Daniel, Daniel chapter 7 right now. <coughs> verse 27 says, The kingdom and dominion and greatness of the kingdom of the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. <coughs> uh, and it's got another verse there. Where is it? And if you remember it, uh, it had already started in 323 B.C., 320 C.A.D., the Church of Christ became the, was uh, recognized as the state religion. Of course, that didn't last long once the popes got started with it. <coughs> uh, but anyways, looking, looking in the seventh, chapter 7, we have, have these same king, kingdoms depicted as, as animals. Uh, the first was like a lion, had eagle's wings, and I beheld the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon their feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Now the, wing, the wings indicate the uh, rapid speed of which it came, came to power. And behold, another beast is second, like a bear. Uh, and uh, it raised up itself on one side and had three ribs in its mouth. After this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon its back, back of it four wings of a fowl. The fowl had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. The Grecian Empire, Alexander the Great, took over this entire world at that time in 11 short years. And when, his, when it, it fell, uh, Four, Alexander had four generals, and it was divided among them. Uh, but in verse, looking on down, talking about the four the fourth kingdoms, uh, had ten horns. That's the last part of seven. And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, the foam for whom were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. That those three horns are Nero. I mean, not Nero, Gaba, Otho, and Vitellius, which never was recognized by the Senate as being Roman empress. Uh, behold, the, the four whom were, let us see, and in this horn, talking about the ones that supposedly plucked them up, and we have no evidence or history showing where he, he's the one that killed them, but they, all three were ass, assassinated, Gaba, Otho, and Vitellius, and, and uh, 68 and 69, maybe less even than a year. 
uh, no, didn't stay in office very long, so they were assassinated. And uh, which that little horn coming up there made, made 11 kings, but if you subtract that three from them, it leaves eight, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. <coughs> right, let's look at uh, Luke chapter two and three. Try to kind of put this in, put this in order, sort of. This is, this is talking about the Roman Empire. And the, God's kingdom was going to be established in, in, uh, during the days of the Roman Empire. And we've looked at this before, but I wanted to co cover it again along with our lesson next week. Uh, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 2, I'm sorry. Verse 1, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Assyria. Governor of Syria. <coughs> now, who was Caesar Augustus? I know y'all know that. Speak up, somebody. I studied, studied about the Roman Empire and history and geography, I know. World history, too, probably. Talk about these emperors. Augustus was the first Roman emperor who began to reign in 27 B.C. and, and reigned until 14 A.D. And this it goes on to mention some other, other things here, and I've mentioned the fact that this is important that God wants us to know this. He mentions taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And uh, in looking at chapter 3, Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea, and the region of Trachonitis and, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene. Annas and Cephas being the high priests, the word of God came into John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Okay, Tiberius, we can figure up, we said Augustus reigned from 27 B.C. to 14 A.D. And if in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, these things were beginning to happen. Uh, he had 15 to 14 when, when uh, Augustus came out. At 15 to that, you get 29 A.D. <coughs> now, if you uh, consider the, the Christ. Uh, public ministry was some three to three and a half years. We don't know exactly what time of the month. I, I, I would love for somebody to look, these, look this up on computers and see, see what computers gave about these guys that's mentioned here. You can find everything else on them. I figure you can probably find that too. But uh, anyways, he mentions all these things wanting us to know exactly, exactly as close as we can about when these things happen. And when we had the uh, 14 and 29 together, we come up with 29. 14 and 15 together, we come up with 29. And then, like I said, add three to three and a half years to that, we come somewhere around 33 A.D., which is when the church was established, so history tells us. Uh, oh, uh, let's see where we're Matthew 16, verses 13 and 19 talking about the king of the Marisid. When Christ came into the region of Caesarea, he asked his disciples, whom do men say that I am? I, the son of man, am. And they said, some say John the Baptist. Uh, I can't do this and remember things too. Let me find it first. Some Elijah, some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. There you go. And what did Christ say? To whom Who do you, you say that I am? That's right. Tell us the rest of it. And he said, and Simon answered, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And then Jesus says, Well, that's correct. And upon this statement, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, Hades will not fail, will not destroy it. Right. Won't hinder it. It's going to happen. Nothing's going to stop it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
Here we find, which is mentioned in the lesson, the, the church and the kingdom are used interchangeably. Uh, upon this rock I will build my church. And then the next passage says, and uh, I will give unto thee the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. In other words, these keys are to make, an open, make the open something. They're to open, open the kingdom of heaven, which is what they did on the day of Pentecost. <coughs> uh, now I'm looking, I wrote this down in order the way I want to do it. Uh, Acts chapter 1, 8 through 11, after the crucifixion of Christ. Let's see what happened there. Christ's ascension, how did he go? Out of cloud. In the clouds. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. Now look back at Daniel chapter 7. Also prophesied there in chapter 7, verse 13 and 18. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the son of, the son of man came, how? With the clouds of heaven. Just like they seen him go. He was taken up out of their sight with the clouds. He came with the clouds of glory. He came to the ancient of days for God, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. <clears throat> so, in looking at those things, the history, history of the uh, prophets, and I've mentioned before that Daniel is often considered a pseudepigraphy. You remember what we said that word meant? P-H-E-U-D A-G-R-A-P-H-A Pseudepigrapha written after the fact. Those who don't want to believe it say it was written after the fact. But Daniel wasn't written until after all these things happened and somebody went back and wrote it down just like it was prophecies because it's so accurate the entire book. So they couldn't they couldn't disclaim it so they they called it a pseudepigrapher that was written after these things happened. <coughs> uh, And look, Acts, Acts 2 38, we'll see that the church was established on the day of Pentecost. Got Peter preaching there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Not only Peter, but Peter stood up with the 11 and were preaching, and every man. There from, I don't, I used to know how many, I've counted that several times, but I can't remember how many nations that were there. Their people were there, or part, part of the people were there listening. <coughs> and what we mentioned before, did one time, you know, who, who furnished the microphone? <laughs> don't know how, what kind of circle. It's, it's often said that maybe as many as three million people or more were there that first sermon on the day of Pentecost. Can you imagine what kind of area it would have took for three million people to stand if they stood shoulder to shoulder? It would be a huge, huge area to stand three million people. And yet every person there heard the gospel, first gospel message preached in their own language. That's one thing that really amazes me when you talk about miracles. Now that's a miracle. We don't often think about that. When we look at, look at this, we think about, you know, what, what the apostles did. They stood up and, and the, the God let, them, let everybody there hear them preach in his own, in their own language. But that's a miracle. But the fact that, that everyone there, like I said, maybe three million people, according to his, historians, Josephus and others. No microphone. But they heard heard the gospel message, <clears throat> and upon hearing, 
Peter said, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, summing it up, that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Of course, then Peter told them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why tell them just repent and be baptized? Because they already heard and they already believed. All right. They believed, too, that they had crucified the Son of God. So they believed that he was the Son of God, didn't they? <coughs> and, and repentance, they, they want to make a change. They're sorry for killing him, so they want to make a change. And they ask, what, what must we do? What must we do to do what? What must we do to be saved? And uh, Acts chapter 16, that statement is made. The Philippian jailer, he asks, what must I do to be saved? Here they just ask, what must we do? Which is the same thing. And they're told from, from where Peter knows what, where they are. He don't go back through all of this about re faith, repentance, and confession. But he says, well, he does repentance. He says, repent. In other words, make a change from what you've done. You just killed the Son of God. Repent of that. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Not because you've had the remission of sins, but for the remission of sins. And again, I, I like to mention the little word ace. It always looks forward. It never looks backwards. They were baptized for something ahead, not something behind. And that something ahead was for the remission of sins. They wanted forgiven for what they had done for killing the Son of God. So Peter tells them to repent, be baptized for the remission of sins. This little word, again, I'll mention it again. I know you get tired of me saying this, Rick probably, but we're talking about establishing the church and Jesus Christ on the rock that it's going to be established on. I was looking back at the, the, the rock, Peter, and, <clears throat> and the rock, and he's upon this rock, I will be on my church. Some people say, well, he's talking about Peter. Upon Peter was the first pope, and he established it upon Peter. That's what the Roman Catholicism wants you to believe. But the word Peter, the rock you use there is a small stone. The other rock he's talking about building the church upon is a huge stone, big enough to be the cornerstone of the church. The confession of Peter that thou art the Son of God. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions regarding what we've went over? All right, let me ask you this. How many, how many of the Roman emperors are either mentioned in the Bible or, what's the word I want to use? Reference. Rep or referred to in the Bible. How many are mentioned in the Bible? Luke chapter 2, we find Augustus, don't we? Luke chapter 3, we find Tiberius. Acts chapter 11, who do we find? Great famine in that day that came past in whose days? The days of who? Claudius. Claudius Caesar. Latter part of chapter, chapter 11. <clears throat> and then in 2 Timothy uh, 4, chapter, verse 17, I believe it is, Paul said... He had already talked about his second appearance before Nero. He said, I'm ready to be offered. Time is at hand, my departure. Then after that, a few verses later, he said, upon the first appearance, I was spared from the mouth of the lion. Who was referred to as the lion? Nero. Now that's that's four that's that's mentioned, three by name and one, uh, what he was referred to as a lion because of his notorious and cruel tactics in killing or torturing Christians. <coughs> so they call him the lion. <coughs> but looking looking at Revelation chapter seventeen, here we find that all all of these emperors are mentioned, not by name, 
but are referred to. Going back to verse 8, it said, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall descend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. There was a myth back then that the mission was Nero coming back from the grave. Let's look at this a little further. And here is the man which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now the woman, by the way, was Rome. <coughs> and uh, which history says was literally built upon seven mountains. The city of Rome. Verse 10 says, and there are seven kings. Now we've been talking about 11 minus 3, which is 8, don't we? The ten, verse 10 says, there are seven kings, five are fallen. Five is a fallen Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, uh, Claudius. Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, and Nero. Those five are fallen. Then, then comes Galba, Otho, and Batalius. We said they, did, they didn't refer to. I don't know exactly why they were mentioned as someone putting them down. That was maybe Daniel's way of... Uh, Dealing with that, I don't know. But uh, anyways, they, they never were accepted by the, by the Senate as being emperors from up and down probably in less than one year, 68 and 69 A.D., parts of those two years. And then one is, you remember Vespasian came after Claudius. He reigned from 69 to, to 79 A.D. And then and he goes on to say... Uh, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, that's Vespasian, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Titus, who was Vespasian's son that Vespasian sent, you know, to destroy Jerusalem, <coughs> besieged Jerusalem and eventually destroyed it. Well, Titus reigned two years, two months, and 20 days, which was a short space as far as the Roman emperors. The only other person that come close to that was Caligula. He reigned from 39 to 41. A.D. And I, I don't know exactly. That could have been, could have been three years or, or less. But anyways, it goes on here. And, and the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. The meat, the beast that was, being Nero. Why did I say that? Because of his severe polish, uh, uh, putting people to death, uh, torturing Christians, putting them to death. He's the only one that really paid much attention. He claimed to be deity. All of them could have claimed it, but, but him, him and Domitian is the only ones I really, I've ever read about that did. <clears throat> Some of them had busts put up, you know, and people had to, fall down and worship that bus tree, they suffer the consequences. <clears throat> uh, but he goes on and said, well, let me start back. And the beast that was and is not, Nero, Nero's been dead, and he is, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Now, Domitian is the only other guy that fits the, fits the definition of Nero. He reigned from 81 to 96 A.D., that a part of the century. And he was the one who they thought was Nero resurrected because he did the same things that Nero did. He put Christians to death, punished them, tortured them. So that accounts for the eight kings, all, all mentioned here, not by name, but... Five are fallen, one is, that's six. One has come shortly, that's seven. And the eighth one is of the seven, Domitian. Because he's, 
had the same policy that Nero did. And they suspected that he was Nero risen from the dead. That was a myth. <coughs> Any questions or comments re regarding what we talked about? What time is class over? Fifteen after. Larry told me the other day I was going too fast. I need to slow down. So I did, I did it again, didn't I? But I had so much t material here to talk about that I, I was afraid that I couldn't, couldn't get it in, and I wanted, wanted to get it in because, like I said, this, this, uh, a lot of this I covered as mentioned in the lesson, but a lot of it didn't. And uh, I think these, it's important that we talk about this stuff simply for the reason, like I said, that in, in uh, Romans, I mean, uh, Luke 1, chapter 1, and, and also not Luke 2, chapter 1 and 2 and 3, and, and, and uh, Luke 3 as well, with all these things being mentioned, implying to me that God wants me to know when this happened. And by doing that, we know approximately when the church was established. And I would love, like I said, somebody that knows computers to look those names up and see what you can find in chapter 3 especially. Okay. Any part of that you'd like to hear again? Don't forget the small stone. The small stone was the church. Did it break in pieces? All these kingdoms. The days of these kings, God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And it shall not be left to other people. We said that all those kingdoms were succeeded by somebody else. And uh, what was, I was going to make a point there. Uh, it shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. We're talking about the four world empires. That's mentioned in the lesson today too that uh, the gospel and the perseverance of the early day Christians being put to death and punished to the point of death maybe many of them. But because of their perseverance and continuing he put these busts out and said, you, you're going to fall down and, and, and uh, worship this bust, Nero or Domitian. He said, if you don't, this is what's going to happen to you. And yet they rebuild. Some were burned at the stake. Some were hung up on poles and, to eliminate the darkness. Used for street lights. And yet they did not renounce Christ. Those things, it wasn't military might, but those things brought about the downfall of Rome. They were never defeated by other, other empires. But the Bible says they were that the perseverance of those Christians what could the church do today? We may have to do it sooner or later. I don't know. I hope not. But we don't ever know the way our country is going. And when it, in this day's lesson, you know, it talks, talks about the church. We need, we need to be the, the kind of, we need to persevere like they did. We need to be the kind of people that they were. The church, God told Abraham, you know, that I will make of thee a great nation. He goes on saying, I will, all families of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, I think. <clears throat> through you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. And that was to come to pass through Isaac, of course. Isaac, well, not only through Isaac, but through Christ. But, uh, you're talking about something that would be difficult, though. When you start watching your children starve to death, 
because you wouldn't denounce the Roman emperor or you get watch them, you, you know, go through maybe skinned or or you either denounce <clears throat> Christ and and or you worship the emperor or you're going to be burned at the stake or, you know, I... You know, I always just think about what I have done that. I would want to think I would, but <laughs> if it come down to it, would I say, yeah, I'll, I'll watch my kids starve to death, you know, or, or I can denounce Christ or I can watch my kids starve mm -hmm. to death. Would I watch my kids starve to death? You know, uh, Paul tells okay. us in Romans chapter 8, you know, for the sufferings, put in my own words, for the sufferings that we go through in this life are not worthy to be compared with what? Yeah, that's scripture. That's easy to quote. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a whole lot e harder if you were sitting there going, do you, you want your child to starve to death or will you just denounce Christ and say that I'm I'm a king? And, you're, you're, and you're, you're absolutely right. But I mean, I... I you know, you, when it comes down to it, you want to think you would do that, but when you, when you start putting that in reality and start thinking about what Nero did to Christians and how he persecuted them, and and then put that down to real, where the rubber meets the road, you, you know they did it. They were sawn in two. They were. Yeah. I mean, they they went through a whole lot of things. That but, would be. But aren't we supposed to be as faithful as they were to God? Yes. <laughs> I, that's what, I, that's what that's, I'm saying. I just yeah. hope I would, you yeah. know, in, in circumstances well, we like won't, that. We won't know what, that's what we need. We need, to all, we need to prepare for that. I've thought about that a lot, you know, and thought, well, you know, I need to prepare myself for whatever comes uh, and not ever renounce Christ for anything. Uh, I, I'm not going to stand up here and say I can do that because my, my time hasn't come yet. But if it does, I, I pray to God about that, that I'll, I'll be able to stand the test. Yeah, that's uh, what I mean. That's so what I hope Christians. I'd be willing to be able to do that. But, yeah. man, you're talking, I mean, that's... If we don't... <clears throat> you know, I was wondering, I try to stress, you know, we need to be a faithful in attendance to the services. We need to be as faithful to God as we possibly can. Realizing we're going to make mistakes, but what does John tell us when we, Robert, I like his statement, when you mess up, you fess up. Repent of your sins, and the blood of Christ continues to wash your sins away. Mm -hmm. But now if we're, if we're, we're being processed, being crucified, it's a little bit hard. If we mess up, it's a little bit hard to fess up, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> and some people say, well, we shouldn't be talking, we shouldn't be thinking about things like that. <laughs> we're... We're, we're not in good shape in this nation, I can tell you. No, Y'all know that as well. And I think and we'd be persecuted more if we actually spoke up. You, you know, if you, if you went in and spoke up against everything that's going in this, in this nation, there's only a small percentage of people that actually, you know, that it's out there in the media that everybody's getting covered on. There's more percentage of probably people who are quote Christians that at least they believe in God and Christ and they try to live kind of a decent life there's very few that's out there filling this world with hatred and stuff and yet they get all the attention and everything yeah. else but what do we do we sit back and don't say much of nothing and but if we did we might not I mean I don't think we're going to be burned at the stake or anything like that, but that would be consequences. And Well, you know, we study history to, in order to quit prevent making the mistakes we made in the past, but we're not doing a good job of it, are we? Oh, it's about time. Then killed a few minutes, and well, I hope hope you got something out of the lesson. Like I said, I know know you've heard this before, but I wanted to present it again before 
You've heard it in parts anyway before this lesson coming up because a lot of stuff is not covered this morning. It isn't covered in our lesson. But a lot of stuff is covered in our lesson. It's not covered that I didn't cover this morning. So it's point being that can cover all that material in one class. So we're taking two. <laughs>